what's up my honey bunnies and welcome back to a new video thank you so much for tuning in and spending your time watching my video hope that you're doing great right now i am doing an intro for this video because i always 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 forget intros if i'm not doing like a makeup video you best believe i'm gonna forget the intro <laughs> anyway finally have the patio makeover that i've been telling you about for like months already it has taken me so long because it was literally hours of footage of me doing the makeover it's a process when it comes to me redoing a space you know in our house i never really have a plan i gotta say I give myself a pat on the back because it came out so beautiful. I absolutely love it. So anyways, enough with this long intro. Let's get started with the video. All right, so today is day one of this patio makeover. And of course, we're going to start with cleaning, decluttering, organizing, and just throwing out things. We already started like a couple weeks ago. Um, we got rid of some chairs. Um, we added some things. If you watch my vlog videos, then you already know we started a garden, a vegetable garden. So we added some beds and we're gonna add more beds. You know, things that don't belong in here need to get out of here. And I'm gonna hose down the, like, the floor and just clean things and organize things. And yeah, so I'm gonna take you guys along with me through this process of this patio makeover. Okay, so I know I already gave you guys a before of the patio, but this is what it's looking like right now. We did add the beds, as you can see. Um, but I've been clearing some of the dead stuff, so I just keep throwing it on the floor, so I gotta clean that. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and start in this side right here. We have the compost, and it doesn't need to be in the sun. It has to be in the shade. So I'm gonna clear some of those things to the side, or I'm gonna kind of go through them, see if they're even still good, and just organize them to the side so that I can put this compost on that side because I feel like out of the whole patio this little corner gets the most shade and then this over here but I didn't want to have the compost like directly right here so I'm just gonna leave it in that little corner and you know I have to sweep all that I'm kind of scared because there's like, a lot of webs I'm sure there's a lot of spiders go ahead and tackle the rest I mean look at this it is disgusting <laughs> that corner over there and then this behind me I already cleaned it and organized it so now I just got to work on the rest which I think is gonna be what's gonna take the longest because it is a whole bunch of stuff as you can see so I might not even be done today it's already like for something I'm trying to beat um, the Sun setting so we're gonna see how it works All right, so I finished sweeping and cleaning up the dirt that was there. Um, so pretty much all of this half is clean and organized. I just need to work on this half and this is where I'm gonna need my wife because I don't know what's trash and what she's gonna keep and knowing her, she's gonna wanna keep everything. So we're gonna have to compromise. <laughs> Good morning, my honey bunny. So it's the next day. 
and I want to show you guys what we have done already. So yesterday I went ahead and cleaned this side. I don't know if you guys remember I said I wasn't going to clean it because I was already tired, but I was like, you know what? Let me just do it because I just want to get it over with. The thing we added was an umbrella. We have two. This is one of them. I don't know if the other one is bigger or not, but we're just going to use this one because we're going to have a little barbecue today. And yeah, so it is nice and clean, decluttered and organized. And now the second step is to add some decor. We opened up our fountain. We've had that for years. Uh, so we're going to turn that on today. Um, I kind of organized some of the things that my wife did not want to get rid of because she needs it. So one of the tips that I got to tell you if you don't really have that much space or you don't want to show something, you just find little ways to hide them. For example, let me show you these bricks right here they were originally on the other side and i just thought they look ugly she is going to use them soon so i thought i would just hide them behind this little wheelbarrow uh, but yeah just find little ways to hide things let me show you another little hiding spot we have some behind the beds some um just metal sheeting i don't know what that is but just construction stuff the other thing that I need to clean that I haven't cleaned, um, but it's going to be really quick, it's not going to take that long, is this little corner right here where I have some bricks, or my wife has some bricks, I should say. Um, so I'm going to have to clean a lot of this um, weeds out and just sweep it and clean it. And then I'm going to use these bricks as a brick shelf. For like a All right, so I went ahead and cleaned everything, all of that little spot right here. It is nice and clean. I took out the weeds and I swept and I watered. So now I gotta figure what I'm gonna put in here because it's just an empty spot and I want obviously for it to look pretty even though we don't really come over here. I was thinking of using it like storage. All right, so it's time for some DIY. So I am gonna be doing a brick, or I don't know what they're called. I call them bricks, they're probably not bricks, but anyways, so I'm gonna use these with some wooden pieces. And I'm gonna use it to make a brick shelf. I've seen this on Pinterest. What I'm doing is reusing what I already have. I'm not going out to buy anything. So these right here are not like the prettiest pieces of wood because they do have like these little gummy things. So this was part of the kitchen. Before we remodeled it and made it pretty, it was completely wood. The walls were wood, the floors were wood, and this is pretty much the wall that was in the kitchen. We saved a whole bunch of pieces so that we can reuse them for other projects and I'm going to use these three because I think they're the better looking ones out of the bunch. So I'm not going to take this off because I feel like the, the pots that I'm going to put on top, they're going to cover it anyway so it's not a big deal. Uh, I can also paint them if I wanted to but I think I'm just going to leave them as is. Okay, so this is what it's looking like now, but I think I'm just going to do one layer because it is pretty wobbly and I feel like it might just fall off if there's strong winds or something. I don't know, but I'm just going to do one layer. Excuse me, come over here. Come on. Come on. Where are you going? She's smelling everything. <laughs> Can I help you? You gotta inspect everything? Of course, for my cacti cinder block shelf, I am gonna need some cacti. So I went shopping for a whole bunch of cute little cacti and some pots. So these are terracotta pots. I wanted everything to look uniform, the same color. Here I'm just repotting everything so that I can start organizing the little pots and the cacti onto the, the shelf. This is what the shelf looks like now. I absolutely love it. I think it looks super cute and I did initially want a cacti shelf. So this is perfect. 
The DIY number two is gonna be our vegetable garden beds or garden beds, whatever you wanna call them. We made two of these already. I thought I would just film the process of us making the third bed. So we didn't follow any tutorial. My wife just came up with this design. She's in construction, so she knows how to build things. Of course, you're gonna need some wood and I do recommend just going to your local hardware store that sells wood and asking for wood that's perfect to be outside and to get rained on. This is fencing wood. I think that's what my wife said. She she does most of the construction in the building. I just, I'm her little helper. Uh, so I don't really know exactly what the names are for everything, so excuse me. The first thing that she did was measure and then cut the pieces of wood into the size that she's gonna need them. Again, we did a six by three and a half bed after the wood was cut to size she did nail them together so we did one first and then we are going to make them two levels or two we're going to stack them together so it's a little bit thicker i don't really know how to say this i don't know how to explain it hopefully just by looking at it you know what i'm talking about <laughs> Also, by the way, we are using some new wood and also some old wood that we already had laying around. So that's why some of the pieces are a different color, like this little aqua color here. We wanted to use everything that we had so that we don't have to spend so much money buying more wood. So of course, this bed is gonna be like a box, so you're gonna need a bottom. So what she did is pretty much measured from one side to the other and then placed the wood there, marked it, and then cut it. She did this all the way down instead of cutting every single piece one size only because the wood was kind of bent so in some areas it was a different size so that is what she did as you can see she's doing this all the way down putting a piece of wood on top measuring it to size and then going and cutting it and then, and then coming back laying it down and then just going on to the next one you are gonna have to secure the pieces together with the frame that you already made so what she's doing is pre-drilling the holes first before screwing them together with a wood screw so she's doing that to every single one and that is how we're putting them together is what it's looking like now but of course we have to connect both frames together so really wanted to have that little gap in between both frames so what she did is she put a little piece of wood it has to be the same size all around because if you use different sizes it's going to be kind of lopsided with some extra wood that we had around we just cut to size and we're putting them in the corner. Of course, use the same wood screws to attach it together to the frame. This is what's gonna hold both frames together and also have that little gap. We did this on each corner, of course, to keep everything stable, but we also did one on each side in the middle to also hold that as well. I almost forgot to tell you, don't forget to remove the little piece of wood that's creating the gap once you have screwed both of your frames together you really don't need that that's just to help them stay together while you're screwing it in now what i'm doing is applying a waterproof sealer on the wood i did allow the sealer to dry for a few hours then i came back and i started to line the bed i don't know if you're supposed to do this but because we do have gaps we have to line it with something else the soil is just gonna fall through you can always just do the bed without the gaps and you can just apply your dirt directly. I did staple the plastic to the wood with a staple gun. The next thing I'm doing is adding some holes or like little slits in the plastic to allow the water to come through. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to add some pebbles. I, there's different colors here because I couldn't find the regular white ones. So there's green and white. But I have the pebbles and then after that we're just going to fill it up with dirt which took forever because this bed is humongous. And it just took a whole bunch of bags of dirt and it was by myself that I was doing this. So it was a lot of work. That is what the bed looks like now. But last minute I decided to divide it. Put a little divider in the middle and since I do have extra wood, the same wood that I used for the cinder block shelf, 
I'm gonna use one of these and just shove it in the middle and it actually fit perfectly. And last but not least, I of course added some plants. I have a watermelon on one side and then I have some lettuce, some kale, some onion, and some fingerling carrots for the bunnies. Next project that I wanna do for the patio is a grape arch. It involves two grapes, some ties. These are zip ties. And I'm also going to be using to create the arch. These are called ladder mesh. So I got two of them. So I thought that I would connect them to make them longer with the zip ties and then just put them in the pots. Just transplanted these grapes. These are the Green Thompson grapes that are used to eat fresh or to make raisins. So um, we are not going to get any grapes probably until next year. But I thought I would do the little arch now so they can grow, you know, in that form. I think these are 10 gallon pots. They're plastic pots. And yeah, so let's do it. I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do it. Hopefully this works. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, honestly. I just have an idea in my head. Hopefully I can execute it perfectly so that it actually works. What I'm going to do is connect them right here with the zip ties so that when I actually put this this way, it's going to be a huge, just really tall um, ladder so that I can actually bend it into a little arch and then just stick it into the pot. So hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying. But that is what I'm going to do. And again, I don't know what I'm doing. Hopefully this works. I'm not following any like tutorial. I just thought that this would be a good idea, like I said earlier. So I put six different zip ties to two connect in here and then four or, or two on each side I should say uh, so what is gonna happen is that when I lift this it's actually gonna create a arch Hold on. let me do you guys see what I'm talking about so that is exactly what I wanted so now what I'm gonna do is put uh, each end these ends right here into the pots so those little sticks right here, this end is going to go on one, on each pot and then that way I can create an arch. So let's do this. Okay, so I just, all right, so I have the two planters where I want the arch to be. So I have one here and one here right in front of the entrance. So this is the entrance to the patio and then you kind of just turn and this is where the arch is going to be. So that is where we're going to put it. Let's see if this is going to work. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that is the arch. I think it's a little too high. Maybe I can put the little metal things a little bit more down into the pot. Now, for now, we're going to leave it like this, but obviously it's going to need some reinforcement. So hopefully, you know, when my wife is here, she can actually like drill uh, maybe into the wall so that it can like have more, you know, reinforcement because sometimes we do get pretty heavy winds. And I mean, if you move it, I mean, Pretty flimsy right now are you ready to see the reveal because i am excited to show you i love the way it came out so here we go
now that I gave you just a quick overview without a voiceover, let me just quickly go over the things that we have here. So right when you come in, we have some plants, of course. We have the compost. We have a little succulent. We have a habanero uh, chili plant. We have a dragon fruit plant. We have a raspberry and we have the two grapevine or the grape plants that we did the grapevine arch with. I also have another chili. This one is called, I think, scorpion? No, 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 cobra. They're called cobras and they're so delicious, very spicy. We have a rain barrel and then we also have our grill that's covered. The corner next to the grill, I have a little cacti and a hanging macrame plant hanger. I got this at Marshall's in the clearance section for only $8 or something like that. Very inexpensive. Uh, then we have a palm. We have a raspberry. We also have a mint, asparagus, a lavender, and a little tiny bell pepper plant that's right in the corner as well. So we have the first bed, and this one we have some lettuces. We have zucchini we have cucumber not cucumber this is a melon and then some flowers and we have a little melon actually this one died already <laughs> unfortunately then over here in the middle of both beds i have two types of tomatoes we have a beef steak tomato which are the big ones and then i have a cherry tomato in the middle we have the chairs table and umbrella the umbrella my wife bought from home depot the chairs we got from Marshalls, I think they were only $40 each and the table we already had so we wanted to just make sure that the chairs match the table. I think the table is like a dark brown and the chairs are black but you can't even tell. So they kind of just go well with each other. On top of the table we have two succulent little bowls that we made I think like two years ago. Some of them died and that's where it's bald and then the other ones grew pretty big. So I'm gonna have to add some new ones just to you know, cover those bald spots. Then we have the second bed and in this bed we have a cabbage. I do cover it with this little cover so that the bugs don't attack it and it's doing really, really well. And then I also have a scorpion chili, that one right there. We have some flowers next to them so that you know, it can attract some bees. And then I also have two other cabbages that are covered. We have a tomatillo. This tomatillo has grown like triple the size because this was like months ago. And what else do I have here? Some bell peppers. We had some beets right there in the corner, but those are already harvested. Then we move on into our little cacti corner. We have the fountain and some euphorbia, some cacti. Of course, that little DIY that we did. I absolutely love the way my little cacti corner turned out. It is so cute. I absolutely love it so much. And over here we have a, and over here we have another euphorbia. This is the biggest one, and I absolutely love it. I think it's a variegated euphorbia. So turning the corner to the other side, we have more palms. We have another bed, the one that I showed you, and then this one I already told you what's in there. Right next to the bed, we have a banana. We have a papaya. We have another palm. I wanted to keep everything very neutral because the shed, as you can see right here, is actually a bright aqua color. All right, my honey bunny, so that is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did like the video, give it a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. It is free to watch my videos. Turn on your post notifications so you don't miss any of my uploads. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on my next one. Bye!